Hello, my name is Russell, and I'm here to interview the writer-director of Mr. Sadman, Patrick Epino. Thank you for joining us, Patrick. Oh no, thanks for having me. Um, and uh, I just want to take a quick second to say uh, thanks to Tim and Sam and Brandon and everyone with Fame and the Gene Siskel Center for uh, putting on this screening uh, and the whole showcase. Um, also want to say hello to uh, my cousin Trisha. Uh, thanks for coming through and bringing some folks. And uh, I want to say what's up to Go and our buddy Guy Sketchy. Keep your hands to yourself. And to anyone that made it from the University of Chicago, uh, Stephanie, Brooke, I uh, hope you enjoy the film. So, you went to U Chicago. Yeah, yeah, I, I went to the University of Chicago. Um, I'm, a, I'm a proud Maroon. Was it fun? Uh, yeah, sure. Tell me, what was the most difficult part about making this film? I'd have to say that was um, probably just like the size of the cast. We had a lot of featured extras who, um, you know, had like one line here or there. And, you know, you have to cast each and every one of those. But, um, you know, we had a lot of good folks working uh, uh, on the film. And I think they did a really good job, you know. Um, that a lot of them saved the day. So, um, in the end, you know, I think it all kind of came together pretty well. In turn, what was the best part about making this film? I'd say the best part was uh, working with everyone. I think they, uh, you know, um, collaborating with other folks is, is always fun. And, um, you know, seeing what kind of comes of it. Um, you know, because you never make a movie by yourself. Uh, seeing how it kind of evolves from what you wrote to what you shoot to what you actually edit and show to people. Um, you know, it's just a, it's just an interesting process, and um, I, you know, I really enjoyed uh, most everyone I worked with, um, and you know, like working with uh, the actors um, was was awesome. Uh, it's just seeing how talented they were. How was it working with all the actors? Uh, the actors were great. Um, you know, we had a great casting director, uh, Laura Corin, back in L.A., and. Um, you know, she did a fantastic job. Um, we actually found Al uh, shooting a promo trailer. Uh, we were shooting a tr promo trailer for Mr. Sadman um, the year before we actually shot, and he almost didn't come in because I think he got lost looking for the audition space, and um, uh, he was like, you know, to hell with this, and he called to say he wasn't coming in, but he'd actually stopped his car right in front of the building that we were in. So, um, you know, he came in and he read he read a version of the script that um, actually had lines, like a previous version, and you know he was just—I mean—he was just really good, um, better than everybody else we'd seen by far. And the fact that he was, you know, actually from Iraq, and that he had this connection to—I mean, he'd met Saddam Hussein before. Um, Saddam Hussein had given given him a car uh, as some kind of reward, you know, because like dictators—they always love killing people and the arts, you know, they always, uh, something about those two things, they just have some strange affinity for. Fascinating. And, um, you know, uh, he passed away last, uh, in April of 2009, and uh, it was, it was tough because although he'd seen the final product and he was really happy and he was proud of what he'd, he'd done, um, you know, like, I always, I always kind of felt bad, like it broke my heart that um, he never got to see it in front of an audience because I think that's what he'd always wanted and that's what he kind of deserved, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, I miss that dude. What was the thought process behind this film? Yeah, I mean, the idea just came from taking this face that you associate with uh, all this heinous stuff and kind of making it this visage of um, of, of innocence, you know, uh, of, of, of sympathy and just playing with that idea. And um, <clears throat> uh, I mean, originally he did have lines, but I kind of took those away early on in the process uh, because I just was playing with that idea of, of, of 
his character being an image and um, <clears throat> being like more innocent than you know it, it creates that kind of innocence in a way if he doesn't have his own voice you know we, we all have everybody has their way of of, uh, of kind of creating meaning through the uh, in the world and um, his was um, defined by being this guy it was almost his religion and when that was taken away from him you know like I was kind of curious in exploring like what happens to somebody like that you know because I think a lot of times when when people lose what's important to them or a philosophy or like a sense of self then um, oftentimes you you know you just kind of left grasping at straws uh, at, at very superficial things to try to patch together um, what you, what your world is supposed to mean. If you had the chance to do it all over again, would you? <laughs> yeah, of course. So, what's next for you? Well, you know, we're just trying to get as many eyeballs on, on the film as possible, you know? Um, uh, just trying to get through the chatter of so many other things that people um, uh, watch, you know, their films and all the stuff online. Um, so right now we're just taking it to festivals, we're uh, screening it at uh, some colleges here and there. Also the film's readily available online at uh, mrsadman.com and uh, you, can buy, uh, you can buy a DVD. Um, these are some eco-friendly packaging uh, cases that we got here um, and we kind of make these as they get ordered. Um, and. Uh, kind of hand stamp them and everything at home. Uh, we didn't really want to make a whole bunch of DVDs because it's a lot of plastic, you know? You sure are into self-promotion. If people can just tell their friends and um, other folks that might be interested uh, checking it out. Thank you so much, Patrick, for being here. And I will be sure to tell all of my friends about Mr. Sadman. See you guys next time. Enjoy the rest of the showcase.